Hey guys, I'm Hannah Cox with Base Politics. Welcome back to my show, Histrionics, where every week I'm discussing women's issues and giving you a centrist point of view. First and foremost, some housekeeping. Thanks so much for sticking with me in my absence. I had a hell of a week last week. For those who missed my community post, my Facebook got hacked. And because I have accounts attached to my Facebook, I had to basically go into shutdown the entire week, shut on all of my accounts. It was a total panic mode, fortunately. Everything worked out okay. I got ahead of it. I actually was able to get the account back, which is sort of a mini miracle. But I did lose a lot of time dealing with that in the process and therefore could not make my normal shows last week. Side note, I just want to know when police will actually spend their time doing things like catching hackers versus locking up people for pot. Like it's infuriating that this can happen to you and there is like literally legal recourse available whatsoever. Anyways, with that being said, we're back in business now. So don't forget to like the video, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel and check out others in my series Histrionics if you like this video. Now let's get into our subject for the week. When I first wrote this episode and intended to film it last week, there was a controversy that had absolutely taken over Twitter and I wanted to bring it to YouTube. Now, while that controversy may have died down on Twitter, I do still think you'll find it interesting and I have a feeling it's not going anywhere. So we're gonna dig into it all the same. The controversy revolves Involved around the existence of tomboys and whether or not these women should exist, are real women, are attractive to anybody. It was a very weird debate that I must say I believe was sparked by an absolute pick me. The initial shot was fired by an account named Samira Khan. I actually had to refresh my memory on who this person is, but when I went to her Twitter account I had her muted so she clearly has come at me in the past because that's the only reason I usually mute people. Anyways, I couldn't figure out what went down between her. Obviously, she's a little bit forgettable. So I went ahead and Googled her and here's what I found. Now, this is from the Daily Mail back in January of last year. And their headline reads, beauty queen turned anti-woke journalist Samir Khan claims the Taliban is worried about Andrew Tate and wants the influencer freed because Westerners are oppressed by feminists. I'll link that article if you want to waste brain cells learning anything else about this grifter, but essentially she's somebody who doesn't like Western culture, hates women, and tries to prop up other grifters in the red pill space. Now, the funny thing about women who glom on to people like Andrew Tate, think about other personalities like Pearl, is that they are absolutely terrified of other women on the internet particularly women who seem to be getting male attention. I'm not really sure what directed Samira's attention to Hannah Barron, because before this event went down, Hannah apparently didn't even have an active Twitter. What she did have was a very popular Instagram channel. And according to this article, she's an Alabama woman who has taken social media by storm with her unique content on Instagram. The nature influencer is called the catfish girl for her interesting noodling videos. On her Instagram, she says she's interested in hunting, fishing, noodling, and bow fishing. Now, I might be from Alabama, but I'm not from this part of Alabama, so I actually had to look up what noodling is, and apparently it's the act of catching catfish with your bare hands, which sounds terrifying. Personally, I think this deserves a visual, so here's a video of Hannah Barron doing just that. <laughs> you see him push me up? Now look, this is obviously not my cup of tea. I don't think you could pay me to get in that muddy water. I would be absolutely terrified. But all of that to say, Hannah Barron appears to be a very wholesome, fun, unique individual on the internet, just out living her life as she pleases. And for some reason, this enraged Samira Khan. Samira posted one of Hannah's videos on Twitter and she wrote, this accent needs to be illegal and women should be banned from doing manual labor like this. There is nothing feminine about American women. American women are literally men. I'll roll the full clip so you can see what a nothing burger this actually was. Good morning, y'all. Quick update on the house because I've been pretty terrible about giving y'all these. Um, we took a little break for noodling season and to put out boxes. Now that it's dried in, we can do it at our own pace. But... Here she is, we're gonna stain all that wood a darker brown and the shutters when we get that on. We'll have handrails, of course. There's the carport over there. Quick run through. All these trusses are gonna be exposed and we're gonna have old tin in the ceiling. Got Daddy and Paul up there working on a wall we're gonna put up for the upstairs office. And we got Def Leppard playing in the background, of course back porch beautiful view and then the walkway to the carport so basically she's mad that she has a southern accent and is participating in building her own home i think it's so funny that she's trying to assert anybody who does any kind of manual labor is not feminine 
When throughout the vast majority of history, women have very much had to perform manual labor to survive. Like, I think the women on the prairies who were literally like scrubbing clothes on their washboards and also helping build their own homes would probably like a word. Obviously, she's also trying to attack American women here as if this is unique to American or Western culture that women might do actual physical labor. She seems historically illiterate. Now, the comments did not go Samira's way whatsoever, but she continued to double down, posting the American beauty ideal, Taylor Hill, the Victoria's Secret bombshell versus Hannah Barron, the tomboy. Why is the American beauty ideal of the tomboy over the Victoria's Secret bombshell? Do American men genuinely prefer the former? Do American women aspire to the former or the latter? Let's discuss. There are over 331 million people in America. Women do not just fall into one uniform group where everybody aspires to look like one type of woman or where every man desires one type of woman. People have differences in their personalities and the things that they're attracted to. And this country's big enough to house all of them. Furthermore, why does it bother you? I am not a tomboy. You will never see me fishing. I'm not going mudding with you. I'm absolutely not going hunting with you. For that reason, men who are super into those hobbies would definitely prefer Hannah Barron over me, Hannah Cox. And that doesn't upset me whatsoever. Why should it? This is such a bizarre thing to be offended over. As I mentioned, the comment section did not go her way. I'll put a few of these on screen. While there are many things to critique about Samira's weird rant, I think one of the most interesting and hypocritical ones is that the whole like trad, alt-right, red pill community is supposedly mad at women for wearing makeup, for caring too much about their appearances, for not being virtuous enough, for no longer being willing to stay home and raise kids or cook or clean or run a household. And then she turns around and attacks somebody for not being super made up, for working on her own household. I mean, Hannah Barron seems to be pretty in keeping with what most people in the trad community would say you should aspire to be as a woman. So I, I'm not following. But crazy is like, a bat signal in red pill community so obviously many others within the community rushed to Samira's side to agree with her. This account wrote any man that finds tomboys attractive is gay. Mega who's a particularly insufferable grifter online said being a tomboy is a mental illness resulting from a girl being raised as a son by a misogynistic feminist culture that believes femininity is inferior or useless. The career obsessed female corporate is the same as the country girl who hunts and does manual labor. If you're wondering where gender confusion began in American culture, this is one of the roots. So they don't want women working in an office or working in corporate world. They don't want them working around their own property. I think you just hate women. In fact, I know you do. That and or you're desperately unhappy with yourself. Because nobody that is well-adjusted cares this much what other people are doing with their time or how they dress, or how feminine they present. Not only that, but as I pointed out in my own tweet, Mega's argument is asshat backwards. I wrote, I didn't know it was possible to be this wrong on an issue, but she really impressed me here. Her mentality is actually the reason more and more people are struggling with gender identity, because they live in a culture that tells them being a man or being a woman must mean you're interested in a select number of activities, or that you must look a certain way, or that you must feel masculine or feminine at all times, which by the way, are completely culturally made up sentiments. When you tell people they must live in a defined box to really be their gender, and that something is wrong with them if that box doesn't resonate with them, you make people think they have a gender issue. In reality, the problem is with these utterly stupid, and again, made up definitions of what constitutes one's gender. Why is it not masculine if a man likes the theater? Why is it not feminine if a woman likes to ride dirt bikes? Activities are gender neutral. Appearances are dictated by whatever society you live in at a given time, but there's nothing inherently feminine about having long hair as one example. And you can find plenty of cultures that value the opposites of what we currently value in both male or female looks. I once had someone tell me they didn't know what gender pronouns to use because they never felt like a girl. What does feeling like a girl even feel like? I asked. I've always had some interests that were more culturally associated with men. That doesn't mean I am a man or need to be one. I've always liked wearing men's loafers and backwards baseball hats. That doesn't make me feel like less of a woman. But what she was actually trying to convey without knowing it is that society made her feel like less than because she didn't fit into their stupid woman box. I'm increasingly more and more thankful I wasn't raised or educated by absolute imbeciles that projected this brain broken drivel on me. Just let people live as individuals and stop worrying if they measure up to your preconceived notions on what men or women should look or act like. There is not a set definition on either, and a lot fewer people would struggle with gender identity if this message wasn't being pushed. 
as you can maybe tell from that tweet, I've actually spent a lot of time thinking about this. I am not someone who has ever struggled with my gender identity in any way, shape, or form. And when I started working for a left-leaning group a few years ago doing some criminal justice reform work, I kind of got smacked upside the head by a lot of this gender theory and ideology. I am, have always been, and will continue to be a supporter of the LGBTQ community. I love trans people. I will defend trans people against bigotry and hate. I will fight for trans people to have equal rights in society. But transgenderism is defined first and foremost by a actual mental condition called body dysmorphia. If you have body dysmorphia, it can be so intense that it can lead you to self-harm and many other kinds of abuse. And you really only tend to see this kind of disorder amongst people who are trans and or amongst the eating disorder community. I think both communities deserve support for this. And once they're of age, I think they absolutely deserve access to services and surgeries that might help them to adjust the issue. But where I break with many on the left is in their notion that biology is not real, that there are more than two genders. I don't agree with that. There are male genders and there are female genders. That is a biological scientific reality. You can love and support trans people and treat them well without ignoring that reality. That's what many people on the left want you to do though. They basically want to say that however you feel you are is your gender. But gender is a biological reality, it's not a feeling. And what people tend to mean when they describe these feelings have a lot more to do with stereotypes in a culture at a given time than they do any biological realities. As I pointed out in my post, there's many cultures throughout history where men having long hair was seen as masculine. There are historical cultures where men wearing skirts and dresses was also masculine. Not all that long ago, only men were allowed to appear in the theater. There's nothing inherently masculine or feminine about these activities or appearances. They're simply dictated by the norms of the culture you live in at a given time. So when somebody says they feel more masculine or feminine, they're mostly just saying they feel they measure up to whatever their culture is projecting onto these genders at a given time. Now the right rightfully rejects all of this rhetoric, viscerally so, often to extents that I don't agree with or align with where they actually start attacking trans people. But you can't reject these assertions on the left and then support drivel like this from Samir con because what she and these other grifters are saying is basically the exact same argument they're essentially trying to push the notion that if you don't wear certain makeup trends or certain fashions or you don't like certain activities that you're not really a woman she literally says you're the same thing as a man it's just endlessly stupid first and foremost i think canna baron is actually quite a bit more attractive than the vast majority of women who are critiquing her and that's their real problem she's more popular and she's prettier and not only is she more popular and more pretty but she's been able to achieve that by actually being true to herself, whereas these people hate themselves and will say anything to try to fill that void. This girl has the confidence to march to the beat of her own drum, and that makes them hate themselves even more. Thus, they're trying to demean her, say that she's manly, she's masculine, she's the same thing as a man, anybody who's attracted to her as a man is gay. The levels to which they are triggered by her should get them in the DSM. Now, when I was talking about this subject with my boyfriend, he made an important point that I want to be sure to distinguish here because I do think there can be some confusion. Nobody is owed attraction by another person. If you as a man or a woman tend to present in ways that break with the cultural norms around masculinity or femininity, you probably will have fewer partners who are interested in you. But attractiveness is really a separate question from biological realities. And secondarily, attraction is often along a spectrum. I'm probably not going to be attracted to a man who is especially effeminate, but I am super attracted to my boyfriend who looks pretty masculine, but who also does a lot of things like cooking and cleaning around the house. I think that's pretty hot. On that same note, a man who is attracted to super feminine women who love to sew and wear dresses all the time is probably not going to be attracted to me. I'm out here boss bitching, which apparently makes a lot of people really mad, but that's fine. I don't need everybody to be attracted to me or for me to be attracted to everyone else. The point is many men do find tomboys attractive. And if you're not one of them, just keep it moving. They're not harming you. But ultimately, again, attraction is separate from biological realities, and whether or not you think somebody presents as masculine or feminine does not change that. Hannah Barron does not even present as masculine, she just presents as country. But even if she were to, I'm sure she would still be able to find a good number of partners who would be interested, and she still would be doing absolutely nothing to harm you or to deserve this kind of mass criticism. Now, in case there was any ambiguity on who was the better person in this scenario, Hannah Barron did eventually make a Twitter to respond to all of this controversy around her existence, and I wanna roll her clip. Good morning, y'all. I don't have a Twitter. I did at one point, but my account got removed for whatever reason, and I just hadn't got around to making another account. But apparently I'm trending on Twitter right now, 
because some girl, hey Merle, some girl said that my accent should be illegal. Women shouldn't do manual labor. Oh, what else did she say? American women are basically men, and she just said that I was not feminine. Ooh. And I would tell y'all this girl's name, but I can't remember it because I don't have a clue who she is. So that should tell you how relevant this person is. But I just think it's hilarious because I grew up as the weird kid in high school who hunted and fished too much because back then it wasn't cool for women to hunt or fish or the whole country lifestyle. And I'm so proud of all the women in the outdoors now who are making that more cool or popular. I'm so proud of us. I think we're doing great. But I've been helping dad build houses since I was 15. When I was a senior in high school, I taught kids how to weld in ag class. So I've done not manual labor. When I think of manual labor, I think of what my dad does. I'm nowhere near that. I just help as much as I can and I try and it's fun. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of blue collar women out there who are also feminine. And so I just think that you should embrace your own individuality. You should be yourself. And don't worry about what anybody else said. Because these folks talking about me and think they're going to offend me. That ship sailed a long time ago. I've been getting picked on my whole life. I grew up around men. Well. <laughs> so don't be scared to build your own box and don't try to fit in anybody else's. Be your own person and you'll be happier in the long run because of that. And don't worry about what anybody else has to say. Hope y'all have a good one. Appreciate y'all. I love this girl. She's gracious. She's got true confidence. She has a lot of humility. If you're raising daughters, you should absolutely be trying to raise them to turn out like Hannah Barron versus Samira Khan. In contrast to the comment section under the Grifters videos, Hannah's video got tons of positive support. I'm very happy to report. Great message to all young women from Hannah Barron. Girls can enjoy fishing, hunting, building a house, wearing little to no makeup, and still be feminine. I wish more girls were as confident and self-driven as Hannah. The Cranky Federalist said, you don't like Sydney Sweeney. You don't like Hannah Barron you don't like southern sorority girls you actually can just say you don't like women this guy said hannah Barron is what we in my neck of the woods call a country boy's dream girl no one's asking you to like women like her but some of us prefer her to trad wives once again it's called preference what good is tearing her down doing you my friend gabby hoffman who is an excellent follow by the way especially if you're into outdoorsy things she said tomboys like hannah Barron are feminine have you ever been around women who fish hunt go outside get their hands dirty we also wear makeup dresses and do girly things most guys like these qualities and women sounds like you're the insecure one but this kind of disgusting desperate pick me behavior is most of what the trad community is made up of they really do just hate women and want to put them in boxes and ultimately it's because they're threatened by them society needs to continue breaking down these stereotypes of what it looks like to be a man or a woman and until that happens you're going to continue to have more and more people particularly young adults and children who are confused about their gender identity while i absolutely support the trans community i have very good friends within it and i know they themselves would not wish for kids to have to go down this pathway unless they truly needed to due to body dysmorphia but when you tell kids that they have to measure up to this standard or that standard in order to really be a man or a woman it's going to leave many to give up and say okay i guess i'm not i guess something's wrong with me maybe i need to explore other options and then the left is over there waiting with willing open arms being like absolutely something's wrong with you join this community the far right's gonna have to pick one either you think biological reality is real or you don't posts like these make it sound like you don't they are playing checkers not chess and giving up these kinds of l's is indicative of just how shallow their intellectuality actually is all right guys that's a wrap for this week leave me a comment let me know your thoughts don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel and until then i'll see you next week if you like this video you will like others in the series histrionics which can be found here and don't forget to check out my other weekly show hannah explains it all here